Hey everybody, welcome to uh, another Connect Group video. Uh, it's a uh, amazing spring day outside. You're going to enjoy this weekend, whether you're uh, in the 5K on Saturday or just enjoying your your family. I have the dog here to say a quick hello. She's getting shy, a little camera shy. Rosie, say hi. Say hi. Say hi. All right, good doggy. Go play. We um, <clears throat> we left off on Sunday with a pretty sobering topic of uh, forgiving and forgetting, with the emphasis on forgetting. And uh, just to refresh us all, we asked the question: Does God actually forget our our sins? And the conclusion was no, not in the way that a human forgets where uh, our car keys are or forgets to feed the dog, but uh, God rather willingly does not recall our sins. So in that sense, he, he does forget them. He does not uh, uh, invoke uh, those sins to his mind and certainly does not hold those against us. He casts them as far away as the east is from the west. Um, the second question was <clears throat> a little more challenging and had three parts to it, um, which uh, should provide some uh, lively discussion. Uh, the first was really regarding vengeance. Uh, you know, how how often or to what extent do we feel the need for revenge when we've been wronged? <clears throat> the uh, second part is how um, how Romans 12:21 calls us to overcome evil by doing good. And uh, another great uh, opportunity for us to talk about how how does that actually happen and um, I'd love for you to spend some time on that one, maybe share some stories from your family, from your experience, or even from Christian history on when people have uh, chosen the path of good as a way to overcome evil. And this is where uh, martyrdom has its history. Uh, there's uh, uh, the you know civil disobedience, civil rights movement. Uh, be it in our country or many others, uh, has its root in continuing to do good in spite of evil. Uh, you could think of uh, World War II heroes, uh, be it Anne Frank or Dietrich Bonhoeffer, uh, many who, uh, in the name of Christ or in the name of uh, uh, goodness, decided to overcome their oppressor uh, through good actions, good deeds, good intentions, rather than revenge. Um, and then the last uh, point that was made was from 2 Corinthians 5:18. It's the, the kind of the kind of the big goal, the big thing that God has out there as a target for us all to shoot for, and that's not just to forgive people of their trespass as we're forgiven, but go beyond and reconcile the relationship, bring back together through the ministry of reconciliation, uh, and that uh, is really complex and. Yet at the same time, pretty straightforward. Jesus told us to do it. Um, we've been given that ministry. Um, in Matthew 18, we get Jesus uh, in his words to describe it. And in 2 Corinthians 5.18, the Apostle Paul, inspired by the Spirit, uh, gives us that ministry as well. So uh, what I ask here is that you'd spend some, some time uh, reflecting together, just talking openly, having a discussion. Has anyone ever tried to do Matthew 18? And read that, please, um, together. And there's particular references, <clears throat> Matthew 18, uh, and it begins in verse 15 all the way through verse 20. If you've tried it, talk about it. Of course, don't mention names, uh, but, but talk about how well it worked, how well it didn't work, what were the challenges, how did you feel emotionally? Uh, if two or three people share that, we start to get the sense of, of, of how much more we need to pray uh, for the Ministry of Reconciliation to become uh, part of, of our, our normal life. Uh, so I'm asking you, as always, to uh, conclude with, with prayer, uh, one for another. If there's any situation that, that comes up in the scope of forgiveness and forgetting, please pray for that. Uh, if there's another need that's paramount, even above this, you know, a need for healing or direction or guidance, pray one for another. <clears throat> it's one of our highest orders uh, in the Connect Group. But just to refresh us all, part of our Christ-centered community connection vision is to uh, come together in these smaller groups and um, 
follow the model, the pattern, the, the way of life described in the early church. Acts chapter 2, verse 42, the disciples were devoted to the apostles' teaching. So that's part of what's happening here. Some teaching and opening up the word of God. They were devoted to uh, fellowship, that's just being together uh, around the table, eating, uh, sharing life. They were devoted to prayer, and that's what I'm asking you to close your connect group with, and also to the breaking of bread, which, you know, it's the literal meal and the eating together, and it's also a reference to the breaking of bread when Jesus blessed it. It's part of our worship and our communion with God. It's that being together in his presence. Uh, so we ask that, uh, you know, you engage in prayer, not just as a, oh, let's pray God will bless this and help us, but as a means of being in his presence. Ask Jesus to come in and sit with you in your group and uh, pour in what's needed for the ministry of reconciliation so that we can be forgiving people, we can be forgetting people, uh, and ultimately be uh, reconciling people. So God loves you in uh, amazing ways. Have a great time. We're praying for you and we're thrilled that you're gathering tonight wherever you are. Enjoy and be blessed. Enjoy uh, the amazing spring weather uh, finally arrived. Have a great weekend.